In this ninth video of the organic chemistry series, we will be covering ethers, epoxides, aldehydes, and ketones. We will begin with ethers. Now an ether has two organic groups or alkyl groups that are going to be bonded to the same oxygen. And so it will have a chain oxygen chain type of uh, functional group. And when we look at the characteristics of ethers, they're going to have a lower boiling point than alcohols. Uh, they cannot form hydrogen bonds with one another. The ethers are going to be less dense than water, and so they will float on top of water. Alcohols and ethers are usually going to be mutually uh, soluble, and so they will mix well together. And then ethers are relatively inert compounds, making them excellent solvents in organic reactions. When naming ethers, we can look at how we would approach naming simple ethers or how we would name more complex ethers. Beginning with simple ethers, simple ethers are named by identifying the two organic substitutes and adding the word ether. And so what we would have is we would name this chain right here, we would name this chain right here, followed by the word ether. So here we would have an ethyl ethyl ether or a diethyl ether. Here we would have methyl and methyl or a dimethyl ether. And again, if we had different lengths, remember we always go by alphabetical order on which name comes first. In more complex ethers using the IUPAC system, if other functional groups are present, the ether part will be dropped and is considered an alkyl oxy substitute. And so one names the longest chain first, and the smaller chain would be an alkyl, and we would drop the YL and add OXY. So let's look at some examples that we would have. In this first example, we'll have one, two, uh, carbons on this side, one, two carbons on this side, and so we would call this ethyl ethyl ether or diethyl ether. We would also, using the IUPAC rules, we would name the longest chain, and in this case would be an ethane, and we would name the other chain as instead of ethyl, we drop the YL, add OXY, and so we would call this an ethoxy ethane. Now here is a better example for us to follow and we count we have one, two, three, four carbons on this side, one, two, three, four, five on this side. This will be our parent chain of pentane. This right here would be a butyl group. Dry, drop the YL add OXY, and so this is a butoxy pentane. Another example we have, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have one, two, three. Parent chain is here with a pentane. This would be our propyl, so this would be a propoxy pentane. Now this one gets a little more complicated. On this one right here, we would have a 1,1-dimethyl methoxy, and you'll notice that our longest chain is right here, and the oxygen is attached at carbon 2, so we would have a 2-methyl-2-propane. Let's review this one more time. Longest chain is right here, that's our propane, this 2 is because the oxygen is attached to carbon 2. This 2-methyl is because this is also attached to this carbon. And so that's where we get the 2-methyl-2-propane. Now on this side, we have 1 and 2, so we have 2 uh, methyl groups coming off. So we would have a 1-1-dimethyl 
methoxy, two methyl, two propane. On number five, we have this is our benzene, so that's our base. We count this one, two, three, four, so we have a butoxy benzene. Epoxides are cyclic ethers with a three-membered ring containing one oxygen atom, also called an oxyrane. The three-membered ringed ether is called an oxyrane, and it also can be called an epoxide. Now, there are two ways that we can name epoxides, and I've got an example here. The first is going to be where we have the alkene oxide, so we would call this an ethylene oxide, and we add that E and E. The second way we can name this is by using the prefix epox, and so we could call this an epoxy ethane. Continuing to review over the IUPAC names for epoxides, here we have that simple epoxide structure. It's composed of two carbons and then attached to the oxygen. So we would call this an epoxy ethane because of the two carbons. Here we have an epoxide and notice that this is a four carbon chain. And so here we have carbon one, two, three, four. The oxygen is attached to carbon two and three. So we would call this 2,3-epoxy-butane. Here we have a 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon chain. The oxygen is attached to carbon 2 and 3. And notice on 2 and 3 we also have methyl groups. So we would have 2,3-dimethyl-2,3-epoxy-butane. If we review over this chain right here, we always want our functional groups on the smallest carbon possible. So we have a three-member chain. It's attached to carbon one and two. So we would have a one, two epoxy propane. Here we would have a one, two epoxy butane. Both aldehydes and ketones have a carbonyl group. Remember that's a carbon atom joined to the oxygen by a double bond. With the aldehyde, that double bonded oxygen will be at the end of our carbon chain where our ketone, and it appears more like this right here, it will be in the middle of our parent carbon chain. Aldehydes come from alcohols that have been dehydrogenated. And this means that the alcohol has had the hydrogen removed from it. The leftover C double bond OH is called a formal group. And this is always at the end of the uh, structural formula. So you'll find this at one of the ends of the chemical compound. And so you will see it as C double bond OH. Sometimes it is abbreviated as C. HO or CHO, and that is also an aldehyde. Now, both IUPAC and common names are used when dealing with aldehydes. Uh, the most popular common name aldehyde you will run across will be this chemical right here, and this is formaldehyde. And so that's the chemical that's used in preservatives. I will be teaching you the IUPAC rules for naming as most common names require memorization. When naming aldehydes using the IUPAC system, the longest parent chain with the aldehyde is named. The E will be dropped and an AL ending will be applied. So as we look at this example here, the common name for this is formaldehyde the preservative for dissected organisms in, in biology. The IUPAC name, we have one carbon. That would be a methanol. Notice that the E was dropped and an AL ending was applied. Now do be careful with that AL ending 
for aldehyde when we look at our alcohols and here we have ethanol with an OL ending uh, two different functional groups two different endings make sure your AL for aldehyde is clearly written and if you are naming alcohols your OL is clearly written for an alcohol in this example we have one two three carbons long so we would call this a propanol with an AL ending here we have one that is one two three four carbons long and this would be a butanol on ketones you will notice that we have that carbonyl group, that carbon double bonded to an oxygen, in the middle of a very long chain. And so this is a ketone. When we name ketones, we will drop the E and add an O-N-E ending. And so as we look at these names, this is the simplest ketone we can have. It is one, two, three carbons long. So this would be a propanone. Now when we get to this one right here, we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is a pentanone. We want this to be on the smallest carbon number possible. We also need to indicate where this double bond oxygen comes off of. So this would be a three pentanone. On this example right here, we have one, two, three, four long, so we have a butanone, and so this would come off of carbon two, we would have a two butanone. Now, common names are also used, and so in this example, we would have an ethyl, ethyl ketone, and our common names, we name it as chain, chain, ketone very similar to our ethers. In this one, we would have an ethyl methyl ketone. And again, we would name this based on the alphabetical order, uh, E before M. So ethyl methyl ketone. 